deadly house fire in San Antonio, this time on the city's east side. How a space heater may be to blame in this incident. And city council members figuring out what projects will be included in the $1.2 billion bond program. We have the latest this noon. We're going to see some gusty winds on Saturday as a cold front comes through. We'll time out that forecast for you coming up. Live from KSAT 12, the news at noon starts right now. Fire investigators believe a space heater that was accidentally knocked over is what caused a deadly fire overnight. Firefighters say a woman in her 90s was killed. Now the fire broke out in her home on Utah Street, not far from South Hagbury. As Katrina Weber reports, this is the latest in what appears to be a string of deadly fires. Flames fanned the bad news that would only get worse for San Antonio firefighters. They found this house in the 200 block of Utah Street on fire, full blown, when they arrived after one this morning. Already outside was a man who lived here, but firefighters quickly learned there was a woman still inside. They tried to get in, but were pushed back at first by flames and smoke. By the time fire crews did find her, she already was dead. The man who escaped suffered burns and had to be taken to a hospital. You can tell just by looking at this how intense this fire was. It really spared nothing. Take a look at what's left of the rocking chairs on the porch. Fire investigators who spent more than three hours here later ruled that the fire was accidental, started by a space heater that had fallen over. This is the third time this week that fire has taken a life. Tuesday morning, a 67-year-old Northside woman who firefighters say was smoking in bed died when her Mitre Street home went up in flames. Then yesterday morning, firefighters in West Bear County discovered a body after putting out a fire on Misty Plain. Another woman and her three dogs also died in a fire last month at a home north of downtown. Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. New at noon, San Antonio police are releasing new pictures, hoping to drum up some clues in an assault investigation. Now take a look at your screen. Police want to find these people. According to officers back on Sunday, January 23rd, the victims were at a bar near the 3000 block of North St. Mary Street. That's when a fight broke out. When the bar closed, the victims and the suspects walked to their vehicles where another altercation started. Police say the suspects pulled out a gun during the fight and started firing bullets, leaving the victims hurt. If you can help officers with this case, you're urged to call Crime Stoppers. That number is 210-224-STOP. Just minutes ago, the San Antonio City Council passed the final project list for the $1.2 billion bond program. Next up, it will head to you, the voters, in May. Here to tell you more about what you'll be considering is Garrett Berenger. <laughs> We had our first look at the bond package back in September when city staff originally put forward a list of recommendations. It's since gone through a set of council appointed committees who made their own recommendations. Now with council's approval, it'll be going to you, the voters. So here's a 10,000 look, here's a 10,000 foot view of what you're going to be asked to approve. Now the five year bond program is generally how the city tackles some big infrastructure projects. For the first time though, it's also going to include $150 million for affordable housing. It also includes more than $103 million for building out the city's trail system, more than $100 million for fixing the city's worst streets, and money to replace two fire stations and build an entirely new police substation on the south side. Now, 1.5% of the infrastructure portion of the bond, that's basically everything except the housing portion, will go, will go towards public art as well. Now, they just took these votes just a few minutes ago, so we're going to have much more on this vote and what's it going to be in this bond later tonight. Live at City Hall, I'm Garrett Berger, KSAT 12 News. Garrett, thank you. We'll definitely take, keep on top of that. Now, the governor's race is ramping up as early voting is about to start. Governor Abbott is in town this afternoon speaking with supporters. This meeting is taking place on the east side. Abbott is joined by Texas business leaders and organizations from across the state. This is Abbott's latest visit to San Antonio as he hits the campaign trail. And also in the Alamo City this noon, Beto O'Rourke. He's working to persuade voters that Governor Abbott's energy bill will not work for Texas. O'Rourke is also on the east side downtown at the Sunset Station. He's outlining his plan to keep utilities on. He says as governor of Texas, he would bring utility costs down. 
Now, Babbitt and O'Rourke are just two of the candidates running for governor. For a full list of who's running for this position and all the other races on the ballot, we've got you covered. Just scan the QR code on your screen right now, and it'll take you to KSAT.com, where you can access all the election information for the primary. Handed to the pandemic, the federal government is preparing to release millions of vaccine doses to kids six months to five years old if the FDA and CDC approve. This as new COVID-19 cases plunge nationwide and a growing number of states ease restrictions. ABC's Rena Roy has the latest. 10 million doses of the under five Pfizer vaccine will be ready to go as soon as health officials approve shots for that age group. Sources telling ABC there will be plenty of supply, enough doses for all newly eligible children. This as the Omicron variant loosens its grip on the country, with new cases in the U.S. down nearly 70 percent in the last three weeks. This is what we've been waiting for. Tremendous progress after two long years. And we're not done, but this is trending in a very, very good direction. Indoor masks are no longer required in New York State starting today, but local officials can make their own rules. In New York City, the mask mandate is still in place. I own a business and I'm very close with people, so I'm going to wear it all the time. Um, I'm not going to make my clients wear it, but I would like them to. Rhode Island and Illinois among nine states removing indoor masking policies over the next few weeks. I think all of us are getting tired of wearing masks, that's for sure. Massachusetts and Connecticut lifting school mask requirements at the end of the month. On the one hand, I can't wait to get rid of them. On the other hand, I feel like it would be good to wait until everybody's eligible to be vaccinated. Still, the CDC insists most Americans should still be wearing them indoors. At this time, we continue to recommend masking in areas of high and substantial transmission. Um, that's m much of the country right now in public indoor settings. Some are calling on the CDC to release specific and clear guidance on how to ease restrictions. The CDC says they are working on potentially updating their recommendations, but that for now, death rates and hospitalizations are still high, so they will be keeping a close eye on the numbers before making any changes. Rena Roy, ABC News, New York. Get ready to kick up some dust. The San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo begins tonight. Find out how you can get into all, all the action from the comfort of your home. Make sure to dust off your cowboy boots. All right, and Spurs guard DeJounte Murray says he got emotional after making the NBA All-Star Game. Here is reason why later in sports. And a local company is going big and staying home by bringing in the bell on Wall Street while right here in San Antonio. We'll explain after the break. This Rodeo Remembers, brought to you by the new 2022 Chevy Silverado, the strongest, most advanced Silverado ever. In the early days of Rodeo, the talents of both cowboys and cowgirls were on display, but one accident led to a major setback. As America pushed west in the 1800s, women learned to rope and ride, but working herds wasn't considered women's work. Then, in the late 1800s, Wild West shows made cowgirls like Annie Oakley and Lucille Mulhall famous. By the turn of the century, women began to rodeo. The first female professional athlete was Prairie Rose Henderson. Known for her flashy fashion sense and daring saddle skills, she became a world champion bronc rider in 1911. By the 20s, women competed in a third of the nation's rodeos, but a tragedy in 1929 would change everything. Bronc rider Bonnie McCarroll's foot got caught in her stirrup after being thrown. Her tragic death changed attitudes, and soon rodeos replaced cowgirl competitions with ranch girl beauty contests. Things began to slowly change. In 1942, women's barrel racing became an accepted rodeo event, and the first all-girl rodeo was held in Bonham, Texas. These rodeos were exhibitions, not official competitions, but they were not beauty pageants. A dispute over a calf roping event in Amarillo led to the formation of the Girls' Rodeo Association in 1948. In the decades that followed, the GRA advanced the role of women in rodeo. In 1981, they changed their name to the Women's Professional Rodeo Association. Thanks to them, today's rodeos are proof that you can't keep a cowgirl down.
Tonight is the night, San Antonio. We're talking about the 2022 San Antonio Stock and Rodeo kicks off tonight on the grounds of the AT&T Center and Freeman Coliseum. And we're taking you live to all of tonight's action. Beginning tonight at 7 o'clock, Ursula Perry and David Sears will show you what's happening on the rodeo grounds, including live interviews with tonight's rodeo event winners. That is tonight right here on KSAT 12. You do not want to miss it. And because we're taking you live to the rodeo, we have a programming note to tell you about. The NFL honors will air early Friday morning at 105 a.m. and Jeopardy National College Championship will air follow it airing at 3 a.m. The Black Rifle Coffee Company is officially public on the New York Stock Exchange. The company's CEO and co-founder rang the bell virtually this morning right here in San Antonio off Bitters Road. They were joined by family, friends and supporters to celebrate the company's achievement. In addition to celebrating the bell, the Black Rifle Coffee Company presented a check for $10,000 to local veterans and first responder organizations. Taking a live look across the city right now, 1212, obviously beautiful weather and perfect weather for the rodeo and perfect weather to get ready for your Valentine's date, JP. Well, you know, that was off the record, Jaffney. Uh, <laughs> He's putting well, pressure on you. Well, but you too, Justin. You both have said some things that I'm like kind of salty about. But oh, no, get no, it no. To <laughs> we're getting there. We still got some time, by the way. I, mean, I know. <laughs> but the weather for that day, beautiful. <laughs> good. It's looking good. The aquifer is up four tenths of a foot to six sixty five point eight. In your pollen count, Mount Cedar jumped up today for whatever reason. It's seven tenths in the high category. Molds are low. A good looking forecast for the weekend and yes, for Valentine's Day. We'll take a look coming up. All right, it's that time of the year again to boot scoot and boogie. But, you know, Justin, you were saying earlier that the weather isn't always the best this time of year, or at least to kick things off. Yeah, so I think the rodeo was looking out for us because, again, I'm, I'm just in a Valentine's Day spirit, and I just felt like it's perfect timing to get in there and see if you're going to commit. <laughs> wow, putting the pressure on again. Hey, listen, to you, you guys are right. Uh, historically, this is the time of year where we see really cold weather. Not this year. I mean, it's going to cool down a little bit this weekend, but today, beautiful, great day to start the rodeo. We're going to see great weather coming up tomorrow. And as we go outside right, uh, right now, we've got blue skies. Temperature of 67 degrees. South southwesterly winds at 8 miles per hour. Dew point is at 40, so it's still on the dry side. That doesn't really change, not until we get into next week at least. And the satellite picture, well, we did have some thin high clouds earlier. Those have pretty much gone away at this point. So 66 in Honda, 65 in Kerrville, 68 in Braunfels, 69 Kennedy, 69 right now in Victoria. And as we zoom out some and look at the state, I mean, most of the state's dealing with great weather, too. This has been the case all week long. 67 Dallas, 64 Wichita Falls, 53 up there in Amarillo. Drought monitor came in this morning. There was some improvement. If you remember with that ice storm we had, we actually did have a little bit of rain beforehand, some thunderstorms that helped us out a little bit when it comes to the drought. Texas Panhandle is still in bad shape, but San Antonio saw that drought move a little bit further west. The areas that have been struggling all year long, though, still very much in an extreme drought. Places like Dilly, Big Wells, Carrizo Springs, Catua still need some rain, and we've got a little bit in the forecast, but not a lot. Uh, Medina Lake. 25% full, it's down 47 feet, uh, three month change here is at three feet. As we look at the rodeo forecast for today, as we pointed out earlier, perfect. Temperatures uh, this afternoon will be around 72 degrees, 63 by 7 p.m., 57 by 10 p.m. And southerly winds at about uh, five to 10 miles per hour. Big picture here, some snow up across uh, the, the plains to get up to Minnesota and the Dakotas. That's sort of the leading edge of some colder air that will work its way down into San Antonio this weekend. And you look at forecast high temperatures today, really pretty nice for most of the country. But I will point out one spot, and that's Los Angeles. 84 degrees today, that's the forecast high. Places like Burbank will be up around 90, 86 in Long Beach. And there are heat advisories in place there. Why do I mention that? Well, Super Bowl's being played there this Sunday. Hey, you remember Tecmo Super Bowl? You guys ever played that? Too young? No? The old old Nintendo? Days. Okay. <laughs> there we go. We got some hands up in the studio. I feel good about that. Okay, 86 <laughs> degrees. That is the forecast for the Super Bowl on, uh, on Sunday there in Los Angeles. Of course, the stadium does have a roof, but it has some open air, too. So it's, it's going to be warm. One of the warmest Super Bowls on record, if you're keeping track of that sort of thing. Hopefully it's good news. 
the Tigers, the Bengals. The Bengals. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. I, I think a lot of people are behind the Bengals this year. Uh, anyway, <laughs> forecast uh, calls for 72 degrees today. As we get into tomorrow, even warmer. We're talking about warmth in California. It'll be warm here too. 75 in San Antonio, 78 in Dallas tomorrow. But this front comes through. And right now, the timing calls for it to come through about sunrise on Saturday. When it does, you'll notice some very gusty winds. Gusts to 40 miles per hour out of the north. Maybe a few showers. Uh, but they won't last very long. I think by noontime, a lot of that's pushing south. So the gusty winds stick around. Clouds clear out a little bit by Saturday afternoon. Still a good day to go to the rodeo. Just know it's going to be a little cooler. And yes, a little windy. Temperatures upper 50s uh, on Saturday. Six, 65 on Sunday. Uh, we'll look at the 70s for Valentine's Day. So yes, Jeff, looks like good weather. Oh. With mostly sunny skies. And then next week, we'll get some more rain chances. Back in the forecast, looks like Wednesday with a high of 74. We'll be right back. Yeah, um, they're good. They're big. They play hard. Um, obviously, Garland's an all-star for a reason. Um, but, I mean, all of them, they, they play to their roles and their strengths, and they're a good team. Derek and the Spurs saw the Cavs at their best last night in Big Board Sports. DeJounte and the Spurs looked good early on last night, leading the Cavs by as many as eight points in the first quarter. But once the Cavs got hot in the second quarter, it was game over as they go on to beat the Spurs 105-92. Keldon Johnson and Devin Vassell scored 18 points apiece, and Murray had 16 for the Spurs, who opened their eight-game rodeo road trip. The Cavaliers led by as many as 23 points, and the Spurs trimmed that to seven in the fourth quarter, but they just couldn't get over that hump. Cleveland answered back to make sure the Spurs did not come back. Down by 23, the Spurs certainly showed a lot of fight. Yeah, I mean, digging yourself that hole makes it tough to come back and win, but I mean, we always compete. I mean, that, if you want to say that's a good thing, but um, that's really a guarantee for any team you want to do that. So um, but you try not to dig that hole and play that way throughout. You know, we miss we miss good looks. I mean, I think everybody had a good look that just missed it. So um, just keep getting those good looks, shoot that thing with confidence, and try to start making them. The Hawks will host the Spurs tomorrow night at 630. Both teams are below 500. DJ showed Cavs fans last night why he's an NBA All-Star this season, scoring 16 points to go with six rebounds and nine assists. When he spoke with the media the other day from the team hotel in Cleveland, G DJ told us he cried after learning the good news he became an NBA All-Star. That his daughter didn't quite understand why the adults were crying, which DJ said was a little funny. And then there was another moment that made him very emotional. I think what really hit me is uh, my nephew, which is my sister who passed uh, this past summer. He's He's been at my house a lot, and I have, I have a hoop inside my house uh, that I put up for him. And I just watched him look at us, you know, as adults crying and hugging each other, and he just looking, and I seen him and me. Uh, like, he was just shooting hoops, and he's just looking at us like, what's going on, what's wrong? And... He just reached out to me and, uh, you know, I hugged him and and I just told him that you're next uh, because he loves basketball already. He's three years old and he could really dribble the ball and shoot it. You know what? Uh, I think the Spurs uh, need to call dibs on that little man right there. Yeah, for sure. I mean, I was about to say that's it's why you love sports, right? You enjoy the athlete, enjoy the game, but then you get behind the scenes, the emotionalness. The, the human factor. Exactly. And hey, the Spurs just made a trade, so I'll have that coming up for you at 1230. Awesome stuff. Thanks for that, Larry. All right, coming up next, Donald Trump is saying he did nothing wrong, but one government agency is saying he did. What they are now asking the Justice Department to do. And a teen boy living a real life nightmare since 2017 is now free. And his parents are facing charges. How authorities discovered he was living inside an eight by eight foot room. Welcome back. New details are emerging about allegations that former President Trump may have mishandled official presidential records. Now the National Archives is asking the Justice Department to formally investigate if White House records were mistreated. All of this while the former president is denying any wrongdoing. ABC's Elizabeth Schulze has the latest from Washington. 
Former President Trump is facing new scrutiny over his handling of official White House documents. An excerpt published in Axios from an upcoming book by New York Times reporter Maggie Haberman says that while Trump was in the White House, residential staff periodically discovered wads of printed paper clogging a toilet and believed the president had flushed pieces of paper. The report comes after ABC News confirmed Trump took 15 boxes of presidential records and memorabilia from the White House to his Florida Mar-a-Lago resort, including correspondence with North Korean dictator Kim Jong-un. He wrote me beautiful letters, and they're great letters. We fell in love. A source familiar says the National Archives is now asking the Justice Department to investigate if Trump violated a law called the Presidential Records Act, which requires White House records to be preserved by the federal government. Sources say archives officials also fear Trump may have mishandled classified information. From past statements, it seems Trump was aware of the requirement to preserve official records, having repeatedly attacked Hillary Clinton for her use of a private email server while she was secretary of state. People who have nothing to hide don't bleach or destroy evidence to keep it from being publicly archived as required under federal law. Trump has denied wrongdoing with his official records, saying conversations with the archives have been collaborative and respectful. Democratic Congressman Adam Schiff on CNN. The Justice Department um, would have to uh, look at those allegations very seriously and investigate them. Former President Trump is also refuting the report that he flushed documents down the White House toilet, calling it categorically untrue and made up. Elizabeth Schulze, ABC News, Washington. A traffic stop in Arkansas ends in a shooting with both the officer and suspect hit by gunfire. Reports say the officer stepped out with the person during a traffic stop when the suspect shot at the officer, hitting him in the leg. But he was able to return fire, hitting the suspect. The officer was taken to the hospital and is expected to be okay. No word on the condition of the suspect. Now to some disturbing news out in Florida. A boy has been removed from his adoptive home after police discovered he's been locked inside a small room since, get this, 2017. Jupiter police say a 14-year-old boy was forced to live in an 8 by 8 foot box with a deadbolt on the door. Inside was a mattress, a camera, and a bucket used to go to the bathroom. He was only allowed to go to school. The discovery was made after the teen disappeared and the mother reported the disappearance to police during their search of the home. They found the room along with thousands of videos of the boy locked inside. The boy was found at the school. Three other kids in the home were also removed. The parents are charged with aggravated child abuse and false imprisonment. And after five decades, a triple homicide has finally been solved. North Carolina police say a now 81 year old Billy Wayne Davis, along with three other suspects, murdered a man, his wife and son back in 1972. Davis is already behind bars in another state, serving a life sentence for other crimes. North Carolina police said they got a tip about the case two years ago. But new leads and interviews with Davis have confirmed he is the suspect. The other suspects that police say were involved are now dead. Authorities say the four men known as the Dixie Mafia have been linked to other crimes in the southeast. Taking a live look across the city is rodeo day today, and nobody is as excited about it as it's JP. He keeps pulling out hey, this I've cowboy been, hat. I've been practicing yes. uh, the footloose line dance. <laughs> it's a work in progress. Keyword practicing it. There you go. Well, you're gonna have to go on the green screen with Justin. Y'all gonna <laughs> have to bust what it out. Make it happen. If, yes. if I go on the green screen with Justin, I want them to make me the same height as Justin. <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes. Magic TV. We can make some stuff. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, it is the first day of rodeo. We are excited about it. I, I, I love rodeo. I love the food, too. That's what I think I'm most excited about, all the, all the fried food. It's going to be great today if you're heading out that way. Temperatures right now, 67 at the airport, 68 New Braunfels, 66 Kerrville, 70 right now in Carrizo Springs. As we look at the state of Texas, good weather all the way around. Uh, 67 up there in Dallas at 63 in Houston and uh, very little going on. We do we do have a few thin high clouds that have been working through the sky today, but those are actually pushing south. So a lot of sun for uh, this afternoon and this evening. Pollen count is in and I want to reiterate one more time. Mountain Cedar jumped up. We had a lot of questions about that today, but it is back in the high category. I hope this is the last gasp year. We are headed towards the unofficial end to Mountain Cedar season, which we typically say it's Valentine's Day. Hopefully these numbers continue to go down, but it did uh, did jump back up a little bit today. Moles are low at 140. 
forecast for today. We take it up to 72 this afternoon, 65 by 6 p.m. down to 60 by 8 p.m. It will be chilly tonight, but not as cold as the past few mornings. We're thinking 40s for lows. A uh, few changes for the weekend forecast, cold fronts and rain chances next week, too. We'll detail all that in the seven day forecast coming up in just a bit, guys. Justin, thank you. Now, breastfeeding is an important part of a baby's development, but it could also benefit a mother's health. With more, here's ABC News in when. Late into the night, when most of us are sleeping, mothers around the world are awake breastfeeding their babies. Breastfeeding has tremendous benefits to a woman's health. It lowers the risk of diabetes, high blood pressure, and even some types of cancers. And now there's another benefit to add to the list. New research from the Medical University of Innsbruck shows that women who breastfeed at some point in their lives are less likely to have a stroke than even die from heart disease. And women who breastfeed for a total of 12 months in their lifetime showed the most benefit. This is important news as heart disease remains the leading cause of death for women in America. So if you're pregnant or planning a pregnancy, talk to your doctor about breastfeeding. But remember, not all women are able to breastfeed and some need extra help. So if you're struggling, reach out to your doctor or a lactation specialist. With this Medical Minute, I'm M. Wynn. And today is the NBA trade deadline. The Spurs made a deal today trading away two players. Larry has the details later in sports. Everything is going up in price, but one company is offering a price break. That story when we come back. This is your Daily Tech and Business Briefing from Cheddar News. Mattel reporting an earnings beat on the top and the bottom lines of the fourth quarter. They're also predicting a strong year for themselves as well. The toy maker reported earnings, 53 cents a share, revenue of $1.8 billion. Now, Mattel's forecast for the year surpassed estimates. That is, the company anticipates high demand for Barbie dolls and other toys that despite potential supply chain disruptions. Meanwhile, Salesforce looking to enter in the world of NFTs with their very own cloud service. The company's co-CEOs reportedly spoke of Salesforce's vision on Wednesday to their employees. The cloud-based software company may end up creating a platform for artists to create and release their content onto the marketplace. And Uber reported an earnings beat for their fourth quarter after the bell on Wednesday. The company posted a loss per share of 26 cents, revenue of $5.78 billion. The ride-sharing service saw monthly active platform consumers grow by 27% in the quarter. Meanwhile, Uber Eats continues to grow with its delivery revenue reaching $2.4 billion. And that's your Cheddar News Business and Tech Update. I'm Baker Machado coming to you from Cheddar Studios in Lower Manhattan. Disney shareholders are on cloud nine thanks to its Disney Plus streaming service subscription numbers. The stock shot up 9% after yesterday's closing bell. That's 12 million more than the previous quarter. The jump in subscribers helped Disney double its profits from last year. It made $1.1 billion in the first quarter. And Samsung's latest move is trying to give consumers a break. We all know we could use one. They're announcing they're charging 2021 prices for their newest phones. The new Galaxy S22 line has three phones, but Samsung says the price for the devices are staying at last year's level. The starting price, $800. The company making the move despite higher costs for raw materials and computer chips. Bob Saget's family says head trauma caused his death. His family said in a statement, experts believe the 65-year-old Saget accidentally hit the back of his head on something and likely didn't think it was a serious injury and went to sleep. His body was found in a hotel room in Orlando back on January 9th. He had just finished a comedy performance hours before. Saget's family also says that they are overwhelmed with all of the support and well wishes they've received over the past few weeks. Country music icon Dolly Parton wants her employees to have access to higher education. Parton's Dollywood is offering free tuition to its employees. Officials with the theme park and resorts companies say it will cover 100% of tuition fees and books for all seasonal, part-time and full-time workers starting February 24th. The employee education program is called Grow You. Employees are eligible to enroll in the program on day one of their employment. And as if anyone is surprised, Steven Spielberg has set a new Oscar nominations record. This year, Spielberg has a total of seven nominations as producer of West Side Story. He has now produced 11 films nominated for Best Picture, which is a new record for the Oscars. Making that money. 
Yes, he is. And now, Justin, I know the weather team has a lot of things y'all do for us to keep us informed from the weather, pollen counts, mold counts, but I think we need to add one. What's the love in the air mm -hmm. with Valentine's Day coming up? Well, maybe Ooh. start singing. <laughs> it's for the way. Okay, I keep there you go. Uh, you know, look, it, it looks good, guys. It looks good. So for whatever plans you have, hopefully you've gone and done your shopping already. Uh, it all looks good. Valentine's Day. <laughs> it's expensive this year. Uh, it looks good. 65 degrees so far today. 39 was low this morning. Records are 88, 19, set back in 1954, and 1899. We'll look at that seven day forecast in Valentine's Day coming up. attention to whether obviously the last break we were talking about Valentine's Day we're in the spirit right JP and just easy and what you're gonna say here mm -hmm. Jasmine so everybody's wearing <laughs> pink we're talking about diamonds I missed the memo that's okay I know All you right. did but it's okay because your heart is in it his heart. heart is in it how about yours oh yeah yeah oh yeah I'm feeling it. I'm ready mm. I'm ready what have you gotten your your wife so far well, never mind. It's a surprise. I'm sorry. I can't, can't do it. it like, I'm so excited. I just I live vicariously uh, through other people's relationships. So yeah, as long as it wasn't one of the cockroaches that you can send oh, yeah. to your ex. No, no, no. 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 I saw Max no, no, did that story. No, no, no. <laughs> that was a brilliant, brilliant thing though that the uh, zoo did. It was all for a good fun. cause. Oh yeah. For sure. Uh, for sure. Well, you know, this morning, guys, I was sitting in the newsroom, and sun started shining through the window. I looked at the I looked at the window. The sunrise was incredible, oh. and I thought to myself, this is a very Instagrammable moment. <laughs> So I hustled up the stairs, got a shot of the sunrise this morning. A lot of other people did too. This is on our KSAC Connect out of Seguin. Mm. Beautiful shot there. The, uh, the morning clouds, we had a few thin cirrus clouds, but it always makes for a beautiful sunrise. And we appreciate that uh, picture very much. The morning lows this morning, 39 here in San Antonio, 32 Bernie Stage, 29 in Kerrville. So a few places did get down the freezing. We've seen those morning lows kind of moderate last couple of days. And here in San Antonio by tomorrow morning, I think we'll probably be in the 40s. Uh, the hill country still may see a few freezes here and there, but uh, starting to see those temperatures come up as well. It's 38 in Uvalde this morning, 36 in Carrizo Springs. Here's a look at the time lapse, and that, that's the sunrise I was talking about. Uh, now that we're into the afternoon, a lot of those thin high clouds are moving out, and temperatures are on their way up. 67 degrees, south southwesterly winds at about 8. Dew point is at 40. That number's come up a little bit too, but still, it's, it's not humid by any stretch of the imagination. And temperature-wise, 67, Boverde, 68, New Braunfels, 70, Pleasanton, 73, and Divine, 69, Bevo, 68 right now in Catula. And here's the rodeo forecast once again. If you missed it, uh, you're going out this evening. You may want a light coat as the sun goes down. Temperatures will fall off into the 60s and maybe 50s, but it's not going to be that bad. Mostly clear skies, and by 10 o'clock, we'll be sitting at 57 degrees. Uh, here is the forecast down the line. A hot day today, I say hot, warm by February standards. And then as we get into uh, tomorrow, even warmer, 75 degrees, 78 in Dallas, 75 Houston. That's out ahead of a cold front. Now, this isn't a terribly a strong cold front, but it will bring some cooler air. And I think what you'll notice the most, some very gusty winds, gusting to 40 miles per hour behind the front northerly winds. We'll see what that does to Mountain Cedar. I really hope that it doesn't kick up again, but something to watch. Uh, the other side to all this, we could see a few showers along the front too. Most everything's going to be really light, 
We're not going to get much rain out of this, but a shower or two possible, mainly Saturday morning. By noontime, any sort of shower activity is shifting south, but we still get the gusty winds. Those winds will finally calm some Saturday evening. Uh, temperature wise will be in the upper 50s on Saturday, so that's the change. We go from being in the 70s to probably 50s for highs, but we rebound right back into the 60s. Uh, by Super Bowl Sunday. So here's a look at the dew points and I point this out because uh, yes, it stays fairly dry and that front drags dew points down again. But notice next week they start to jump back up so we get more humidity. You may actually feel it a little bit by Tuesday and Wednesday. That is going to lead to some rain chances that we do need a 30% chance there on Wednesday. It's just a small chance with that front on Saturday. Here's the extended forecast 75 tomorrow, 59 Saturday. 65 on Sunday. We will get close to freezing Sunday morning. 70 for Valentine's Day. Great weather. 71 Tuesday and uh, 74 on Wednesday with that chance of rain. We'll be right back. Trade deadline ends today, 2 p.m. local time. And this morning, the Spurs made another move, sending Thad Young and Drew Eubanks to the Toronto Raptors for Goran Dragic in a protected 2022 first round draft selection. As reported by ESPN, the Spurs are expected to negotiate a contract buyout with Dragic. Among the teams expected to be interested once he becomes a free agent, the Dallas Mavericks, Milwaukee Bucks, Chicago Bulls, and LA Clippers. The Spurs trading both Young and Eubanks will clear minutes for Zach Collins, the Spurs' big free agent signee who made his season debut last week. Now, last night in the Spurs' loss at the Cavaliers, Collins scored five points in 18 minutes, and he was asked about his mindset on the court. I uh, just play hard, play hard, bring energy. Um, you know, I, I need to finish better than pay. I need to, you know, I, I can, there's a lot of things I can do better, but above all else, you know, I just want to go out there and play hard. And, you know, at, at the end of the day, you're going to miss shots, you're going to make mistakes, but if you go out there, play hard and, and, and try to help you know, in as many ways as you can, you know, then you in, in, you live with the results. And that's just kind of my mindset. You know, I, you know, my ankles continuing to feel even better and better since I've been playing. So that that's also a good feeling, too. So that gives me confidence to go out there and do that stuff. Pro football coverage powered by Davis Law Firm. L.A. Rams receiver Cooper Cup is a bad dude. and The Bengals will likely have a tough time slowing him down in Super Bowl 56. We're now three days away from the big game between the Rams and Bengals since he is the surprise team of the two, in large part because of Bengals QB Joe Burrow, a.k.a. Joe Cool. He's a really talented guy, um, really talented football player, great competitor, very even keel, throws it great, moves around great. Um, I think he does, uh, you know, a great job of for a young player, you know, dissecting defense, understanding where the football should go. And then he does a nice job of putting the ball in spots where his guy can go make plays for him. Um, you know, I've, uh, I've I've been a fan of his since he was at LSU. Love the way he played, love the way he competed there. And that's just done nothing but carry over into this league. And, you know, he's in this game because he's uh, he's willed that team to a bunch of wins. And uh, that's an impressive thing for a guy of, you know, of his age. Burrow, now in his second NFL season, certainly doesn't play like a sophomore QB in the NFL. During this playoff run, he's passed for 842 yards, four touchdowns, and two picks. Stafford, who's now in his 13th pro season, but his first at the Rams, is a guy Joe Cool certainly admires. Well, I always really enjoyed watching him. You know, my most vivid memories are, you know, that Lions always played on Thanksgiving, so I always got to see him play, you know, with my family all around, sitting down and watching football on, on Thanksgiving Day. And I always thought, you know, he didn't always get the credit that he deserved for, for what he was doing. He's you know, been one of the best players in this league his entire career. And it's just because they didn't have the, the team success in the playoffs, I think, you know, kind of overshadowed what he was doing as a player. Here is your Super Bowl matchup. The Rams are favored by three and a half, and this is just coming down. According to reports, the Boston Celtics have acquired point guard Derek White from the Spurs for shooting guard Josh Richardson and a first-round pick. So we'll have more for you on that trade coming up today at 5. Oh, wow, lots of, uh, lots of sports news and lots of last-minute deals here. Yeah, it kind of seems like a fire sale for the Spurs right now. <laughs> well, hopefully it all works out for Coach Pop. Right. We definitely want to see some more wins up on the board. Thanks for that, Larry. Now, also, a lot of rodeo spirit going on. Let's head over to SA Live 
with Mike and Fiona. Hey oh guys. yes, let's rodeo San Antonio. It is a rodeo roundup on today's show. Yep, opening day and we have rodeo royalty with us. Miss Rodeo Texas 2022, <laughs> Bobby, Laura Ann. Good afternoon. <laughs> Good afternoon, thank y'all for having me. Of course. What are you looking forward to most on opening night of the rodeo? Oh my gosh, I get to haul out of the, the main alley with the San Antonio flag, so I'm very excited. Yes. <laughs> All right, she's gonna give us a little uh, lesson in roping as well. Well, because we all about a new event just for the ladies in the rodeo this year yes. as well. So. <laughs> yes. And Jen is, of course, out there on the rodeo grounds. Hey there, Jen. Hey, yes, you said it, Fiona. I'll say it again. Let's rodeo San Antonio. Y'all having fun? Wait, guys, I made some friends already. I have my taco. Hey, last year was a condensed version, right? This year, everything is open. There's entertainment, lots of good food, and we are going to go meet one of the students that's showing off one of her animals. We're going to get up close with more animals. Just lots of fun here, guys. I'm excited, if you can't tell. And I made my friends. Say hi, guys. Back to you, Fiona Mike. Yeah, I've been all across the USA, east of New York, west of L.A. Met a lot of nice folks in a lot of nice places. You head out to the rodeo, you know, you want to step out in style. So I went over to Booth Barn and got all gussied up, which, of course, we like to thank them I, for. I got, I got a little gussied, too. Yes. Myself. So, and we want to know. Here we are. Here we are. Yeah. yeah. What are you uh, looking forward to the most at the uh, San Antonio Stock Show and Rodeo? It's going to be beautiful. You're going to be headed out there. That and a whole lot more coming up on SA Live, so stick around.